patch cables. We have them everywhere. And in order to make sure that they, uh, they work, wherever you're using them, you can either plug them in and hope for the best, or you can use a cable tester. Cable testers come in all shapes and sizes. Well, not really all shapes, but definitely various different types of cable testers exist. From the simple conductivity tester, a little more advanced with a wire map tester, to qualification testers. testing out cables there's a few very simple details that you need to understand if is this cable made correctly is it uh, has it been damaged is there a nick in the line is there so many different elements that could possibly go wrong when we take a cable from scratch we make it ourselves we need a way to test out whether or not we made the cable correctly if we crimped it properly little things like that now you could use something really crazy in advance like this this is a Fluke Network's Cable IQ Qualification Tester. It, uh, it covers all of the basics, wire map, conductivity, frequency on the line. Is it good for VoIP? Is it good for 10 base T, 100 base T, gigabit? It's not exactly the most new or advanced cable to qualification tester, but it does keep a record of everything that you've done. So as you're testing 100 cables, you keep a record of it and you can make a printout and say, all 100 of these lines are correct and working. This is the kind of device you would use in a in an office environment or any an advanced enterprise level where you're installing hundreds of cables or, or large quantity of cables but you can also use it in your home but these things are pretty pricey they run about 1200 bucks for this device or the entire kit that i have runs about 2500 dollars. you can back up a little bit and go with something a little cheaper these things you can pick up for somewhere between 10 and 30 dollars depending on the quality the age and uh if you actually expect it to work properly. This one is very simple. It's got two ports on the top and you push the button and it goes through every single line and tells you if it's connected to the other side. Uh, this is a cable tester that I made. It is less intelligent than all of these. The material cost is, uh, is about 10 bucks. So in all reality, it's probably better to just buy one of these, but I like to get into the nitty gritty and actually build some things. It looks really cool. Um, I used a bunch of, uh, multicolored LEDs to, to justify making it look neat and very Christmassy in all reality. Uh, but it runs on a 9-volt battery. It, uh, it operates inside of a surface mount single gang box with a faceplate. And then I've got a, a surface mount single port jack as my remote end. This is a really neat device for beginners to both get in, get some soldering work done, and just construct their own tester and say, hey, I made this thing. And it, it shows the relationship between the pairs and the wires and allows you to understand the limitations of something like this while looking at why these things are really great. It's a learning experience, as is with everything. So I'm going to show you today how to make one of these. Items you'll need for this project. You're going to need a drill with about a 3 16th or a 5 millimeter drill bit. A pair of snips are always good. A soldering iron and a 110 punch tool. Some cable strippers would be nice. And you're going to need some solder, of course. A crimp tool. All these items can be found in your local hardware store or on Amazon. And if you're already in the industry or looking to get into the industry, these are good tools to have. Because this right here, I've literally had this set for over 10 years. Same with this thing. Other items you'll need to build this device you're going to need a low-voltage surface mount single gang box and a keystone faceplate for the keystone jack RJ45. You can get this in Cat 5E and Cat 6. Cat 5E or Cat 6 surface mount port, single port box. I found this one I thought was really interesting because the jack comes inside of it. It's a single port, takes the cable in the back end, and it's perfect for what we're going to need in regard to the remote side of our cable tester. You're going to need a 9-volt snap connector. Some heat shrink tubing is always useful. You're going to need four LEDs. I happen to get the orange, yellow, green, and blue. You're also going to need a, a resistor. These LEDs comes with a 200-ohm resistor. You're going to need a small length of Cat5e or Cat6 cable. 
Using our cable stripper, we're going to go ahead and cut back some of the sheathing. And we're going to snip off this length of our conductors. We're going to use our single port jack. And we're going to bridge all of the pairs. So the blue and blue-white pair is going to get bridged together. The brown-brown-white pair is going to get bridged together. The orange-orange-white and the green-green-white. They're going to be bridged together. And then we're using our 110 punch tool. You can do this in your hand or put it on a solid surface. And we're going to, we're going to go ahead and... Make sure you have the cutting blade on the on the outside, so you have the loop on the inside. And then we're going to punch down all of our conductors. And that finishes off the remote end of our connector. Very simple. Now to get started on a surface mount box. I use a little bit longer length for this because we're going to we can snip off the excess and it's not that big of a deal. We're going to peel back an excessive amount of the sheathing strip it down so we have a lot of lot of wire to work with and we're going to separate all of this out and we're going to separate our solid wires from our striped wires we're going to take all of our solid wires and we're going to pull them off to the side and using a wire stripper i happen to have really nifty wire strippers on the end of my snips and we're going to peel back and expose the copper We're going to twist all of these wires together. I use stranded cable for this because it's so much easier to work with than solid core, but solid core would also work as well if that's what you have available to you. From here, we're going to take a run of our heat shrink tubing and we're going to pass it back over these wires and apply a little bit of solder to solidify this connection. With the stripe wires, we're going to peel back the sheathing and then we're going to solder the exposed copper to the resistor and then the resistor to the anode side of the LED. Remember to put the heat shrink tubing on first before you solder down, and then I use the heat shrink tubing to act as a sheathing for the entire length of the anode. You could have cut this shorter, but in my, my demonstration here, I did not. Now we're gonna wanna get our drill, and we're gonna drill into the surface mount face plate, putting a little bit of space between our LED, our holes, or these is where our LEDs are gonna go. I went ahead and placed all of the LEDs in line. I put the red for orange, green for green, blue for blue, and the yellow I used for brown. I took and folded over the cathode side of the LED across each one, and we're gonna join all of these together. The last remaining LED is gonna have the cathode hanging off, we're going to take the negative lead. We're going to put some heat shrink tubing on that. Let's twist this into the end of the end of the cathode, solder that in place, and then put the heat shrink tubing over top and seal it down. What I did here is I had all this excess of wire and I pulled the remaining conductors down and moved the sheath gently because if you put too much pressure, you can damage the cables, but just move the sheath down to as close as possible to our heat shrink tubing. The remaining wires are now exposed and we can put them as close as we need to into our keystone jack and use the 110 tool to punch down all of the all of our conductors. Get a 9 volt battery connected to our snap connector and then you get a known good cable, one that's already being used and already working to make sure that all of our electrical is working properly inside of this inside of our tester. We go ahead and plug it in and if all works well, it should light up like this. Something's wrong with this one. Is it the cable? Of course it is. I intentionally made this one wrong. I've even gone ahead and snipped off the blue wire just to show what it looks like when the connection is wrong. But what I've also done, I swapped our orange wires in this connector and I moved the green wire to where the brown wire is and the brown to the green. And I did this to show that even though these are all out of order, this tester reads them as correct or just reads that there's conductivity between the positive and the negative side of these LEDs. But if you can look at your cable and see that it's correct, and you're like, did I crimp that correctly? You can wiggle it around and say, oh look, the lights aren't going off, the cable's properly crimped. Where a tester like this will tell you everything you need to know. And as we can see here, that one and two are crossed, and six and eight are crossed, and four is broken. If you like this video and wanna see more things like this, you can like and subscribe, leave comments down below, and I'll see you next time.